So as I was saying, there was other bits to this ORM that we need to complete in order to finish off our data repository um, factory, which is down here. So I'm going to deviate slightly from previous um, concept that I've implemented. And I'm going to put a new file within this root directory, which is our liquid ORM directory. So I'm going to say new file. I'm going to say liquid ORM manager dot PHP and this is the file that's going to actually gel all of the comp all of the components that we've created within this within this ORM we're going to gel them together this is just my way of doing it so say PHP declare strict types equal one again tedious but has to be done. Say namespace, and we're going to say magma. I'm going to say liquid ORM because we're now within that document root or that folder root. And say class. And say liquid ORM manager. All right. And we're going to take a couple of properties which is going to be some protected properties. So we're going to say protected string table schema. And the second one is going to be protected string table schema ID. And the other one is going to be protected and this is going to be our data mapper environment configuration I'm going to say environment environment configuration that's how we're going to name the variable All right so I'm going to create a constructor method in public function constructor or construct and we're going to pass in some we're going to type int the arguments that we need and the first is going to be data mapper environment configuration and say environment configuration second is going to be a string which is going to be the table schema and third is also a string which is the table schema ID. And what we're going to then do is we're going to pipe these properties to these arguments. So we're going to say this dot environment configuration, which is just down here, equal environment configuration. And say this table schema equal table schema. So this table schema ID equal table schema ID. All right now, I'm going to create a method and I'm going to call it public function initialize, is the name of this method. Um, it takes no argument, but this is this is what I'm going to do now. So the first class I want to bring in is my data mapper factory. So I'm gonna bring my factory class in. So I'm gonna say I'm say data mapper factory. Alright, so I'm getting my factory class right here. Let's bring that in. Um, let's bring that in. New data mapper factory you see it brought it in for us which is cool now we haven't got well we've got a constructor but the constructor is not really doing anything at the minute so we've just created an object we've just created an object 
of that data mapper factory. Now, the next bit is our data mapper variable. I'm going to say equal data mapper factory. Yeah, we're calling that object. And then we're going to call the create method. The create method within that factory. Right? And what does this method require? This method require two arguments, which is the first is our database class on our data mapper environment. So I'm going to pass in our database connection class and I'm going to do it like this. So the database, database connection, colon, colon, class. That is it. We're passing in a reference to that namespace. So if you can imagine, this will convert to something like this. Let's do that. So we'll convert to something like magma data base connection database connection connection or yeah that's what it's called connection yeah so that's effectively what this is returning it's re returning a, ref a reference to that namespace into that string right here and that's all we're then creating an object of this database connection string down here because we were referencing that namespace of that class right let's get rid of that so we pass in our database connection class and effectively what, what we could do on this way of doing it we could actually pass in a different database connection and as long as we're implementing that database connection interface we're all good to go we could actually implement different database connection strings but as i said we're only supporting pdo on the two drivers which is mysql and postgres and the second argument that we need to pass in into this data mapper factory is our data mapper environment configuration and again colon colon class because we've got two strings requiring two objects which is what we've passed in by which is what we passed in to our create method right here right so I'm going to then say if data mapper then I want to create now a next variable called query builder and say equal new query builder Qu or the query builder factory right query builder factory so if we get our query builder factory we're going to see that we also require the constructor is empty but our create method requires one argument which is our query builder string so we're going to actually pass in our query builder so we're going to say query builder colon colon class right as it brought that in um it's not let's just fix that query builder semicolon right so now we've passed in our query builder into our factory and just like this one we could pass in a different set of query builders if we're implementing a different database that's got different sequels command and if we're if we're implementing our query builder interface and implement those same method then we can effectively write different queries for different database and it should not affect the it should not affect our application functionality because we're using the same interface that implements the same methods effectively now i'm to say if query builder then i'm going to say entity manager entity manager factory now we're getting all the factories 
open that one up you can see we've got a constructor that's got two arguments so let's tackle that so I'm going to say equal new entity manager factory all right then we're passing in the data mapper interface on our query builder interface that's what this factory requires so these that we've created these variables we're just going to pass them in and the first is our data mapper which is what we've just we've just created that object from that class and we're going to pass that in to say data mapper right and the second is our query builder or query builder object right which is what we've got right here or query builder that which which gets our factory and which creates an object of our query builder that we're going to pass that all in into our entity manager factory and what's this error um, get an error right here and what have we not done we've not done something um, Query builder factory. Um, all right, so you see we've passed in our query builder class within our factory, and our factory hasn't got well, it's got a constructor, but we've not set anything in our constructor. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of that, and we need to say that needs to be called query builder factory. I'm going to say query builder. I mean to call that create method, right? A create method, then pass in that query builder class. And that's it. So that's what we missed. Um, query builder factory, actually. Yeah, so that's cool. So, um, oh, come on, stop making these mistakes. Query builder. Passed and to assign it a variable called query builder. Equal query builder factory create. Cool. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. And so now we've pass in these actual objects to our entity manager factory which is what we've got here this is what it's asked for we then now got access to these objects and what we want to do now is we want to return turn our entity manager factory and is it a factory entity manager factory yet yeah. we want to call that create method that create method and we want to pass in let's look what it's asking for asking for our crud our crud class so we're going to say crud colon colon class and what else is it asking for asking for our table schema or table schema id and some options so we're going to pass in our table schema which we've piped to this constructor argument right here so we're going to say this table schema and this table schema id all right and we've got a fourth a fourth argument within this within this method which is options which you don't really seem to be doing anything with so are we doing anything with the options um crit string can we make use of that option somewhere um I don't know what we're just gonna put an array an array and call it options and make it optional 
protected array of options. I'm going to initialize it with an empty array. And then I'm going to pipe it down here. Say this options equal options. I don't even need to um, initialize it because it's already been initialized in the in the constructor right here. But we've got no use case for this at the moment. I don't I can't remember why I've actually added that in. Um but anyway, we're gonna make use of it. And so we've got the create method in. So we're going to pass that in as an option. Pass our options in. And back into our manager file, we're going to also manager one, two, three. One, two, where are we? Just close this out. We're not we're not using these. It's starting to confuse yourself now. Um, so we got option which we pass in, and we're building our CRUD entity factory. We got one, two, three, four arguments. We've passed that to our CRUD object, and we just need to specify that within this so we could effectively just add again an array of options which is optional and so a protected array of options then pipe that in equal to options then we could just return that down here All right so this is like a top level file this is where we can make configuration or make changes that will affect all our other components so i think that's that so we're returning our entity entity manager factory returning that create method and we're passing in what it requires which is our crude object or table schema, table schema ID, and we've just added this array of options, which at the moment we have not got any use case for, but it was there for a reason, but I cannot remember what that reason was. Um, and I think, yeah, and that's our class that actually gels our three components together. And you're going to see where we're going to be using this to actually initialize our data access layer within our application so i hope you i hope you get that i hope you understand it i'm going to push this to git um i'm going to actually end this end this segment here so again guys please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're finding some value from this because again we've got plenty to do we've got plenty to crack on with but this i think at the moment completes or liquid ORM we're going to come back we're going to as we go along keep improving it keep refactoring it you know ironing out all the ironing out all bugs and errors and all that kind of stuff but I want to jump on to a different part of our framework before I can get to a point where I, where I can simulate a application and so we can start testing and see what we can pull from the database yeah so that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to push this last um, update to the repository so you can mess around with the code and have a look at it, go through it, try and understand it. I hope I was, try I hope I was explaining it to you as, as, as good as I can. Again, as we go along, I will be sort of like um, going back over bits just to sort of like get the point to stick. All right, so if you know, yeah, so we're going to be doing that. So, guys, you know, stay safe, stay blessed, and tune in to the next video. Which, again, I'm I'm trying to roll these out as quickly as possible. So, you know, you've got something to continue watching as part of the series. So, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you, and bye.